have here? Well, we fast forwarded to the Roaring Twenties where women now have the right to vote. Awesome. And not only has the hemline gone up, she's bobbed her hair, she's burned her corset, she's rolling her stockings to the knee. Shoes have changed, we're no longer wearing the booties. She's wearing a midi and a cloche hat. Shorter hemlines, fewer undergarments, now I can actually move. Amen. And wait till you see what I have for you. This is an outfit similar to the one worn by Susan Langland. The divine Langland was a symbol for women's newfound freedom in the 1920s. Look at these daring pleats and notice the bare arms, not to mention the signature headband. And an interesting footnote, April, is that Suzanne Langland's father, who coached her, actually gave her sips of brandy before sending her out onto the court. My, my, daddy's little girl. <laughs> <laughs> she was known to challenge many men to play, and of course she had the new freedom of movement. Things are really starting to change. See this? This will be gone in about three years. Billie Jean King, Chris Everett, here I come. Well, as you can see, the women are gaining more and more freedom off the court and on. And what we've got next is a real shocker. In 1949, Gussie Moran wore this outfit with lace bloomers underneath, and sometimes when she was feeling frisky, she wore leopards. Well, that's my authentic Gussie Moran outfit, so you must have those on underneath. Maybe I do. Well, come on, show America. Oh, I don't think so. I'm still on speaking terms with my mom. Oh, come on, this is 2007. That was 1949. Call me an old-fashioned girl. I'm not budging. Well, the 50s had shockers of their own. They stored their tennis balls bloomers. And, and now, now it's time, time for some, some runway. Wow, 130 years of tennis fashion. I hope you had as much fun as I did. See you on the court. Dual DVDs, now playing in the all-new Chrysler Town & Country. Visit newtnc.com.